Ever wondered about the difference between liquid and gaseous hydrogen for mobility applications? As the world moves towards a cleaner, greener future, hydrogen is becoming a key player in mobility. But it's not as simple as hydrogen equals green. The form in which hydrogen is used, either liquid or gaseous, can drastically impact storage efficiency, energy density, and infrastructure needs. And of course, the specific use case matters too. So let's dive into the world of hydrogen and its forms, starting with gaseous hydrogen. Gaseous hydrogen, a common form used in mobility applications, has several unique characteristics. Let's dive into them. First off, the storage method. Gaseous hydrogen is typically stored under high pressure, ranging from 350 to 700 bar in either composite or metal containers. This method necessitates robust and heavy storage tanks, which can influence the weight and space requirements in vehicles. However, efforts are underway to develop materials and technologies that will allow hydrogen to be stored at lower pressures, such as 35 to 70 bar. This could improve safety and reduce weight. Now let's talk infrastructure. Gaseous hydrogen has the advantage of leveraging existing high-pressure gas storage and distribution systems. Yet, the development of a comprehensive hydrogen refueling infrastructure remains a challenge in many regions around the globe. Next up, energy density. Gaseous hydrogen has a lower energy density compared to its liquid counterpart, meaning it requires more volume to store the same amount of energy. This can impact vehicle design and potentially reduce its driving range. Finally, let's look at applications. Gaseous hydrogen is often the go-to choice for fuel cell vehicles, especially light-duty passenger cars. These vehicles usually employ a type IV pressure vessel for hydrogen storage. Although gaseous hydrogen has its challenges, it's still a preferred choice for many light-duty vehicles. But what about liquid hydrogen? Liquid hydrogen stored at extremely low temperatures offers another option for hydrogen mobility. This form of hydrogen requires cryogenic storage, which means it's stashed away in specially designed tanks that can handle temperatures as chilly as negative 253 degrees Celsius or 20 Kelvin. Advanced insulation and safety measures are crucial to maintain these low temperatures and ensure secure storage. The infrastructure needed for liquid hydrogen is specialized. Unlike its gaseous counterpart, it can't ride on the coattails of existing high-pressure gas infrastructure. The need for cryogenic storage and transportation systems makes it a bit more complex and less common. But why go through all this trouble? The answer lies in its energy density. Liquid hydrogen packs a bigger punch in terms of energy per volume compared to a gaseous hydrogen. This means you can store more energy in the same amount of space, which could potentially extend the range of the vehicles using it. Now, where does liquid hydrogen find its place? It's often considered for heavy-duty applications like buses and trucks. The higher energy density and longer range become significant factors for these vehicles, making liquid hydrogen a compelling choice. However, it's not all rosy. The challenges associated with cryogenic storage and the phenomenon of boil-off, where liquid hydrogen slowly evaporates over time, are hurdles that need addressing. Liquid hydrogen, with its higher energy density, offers potential for heavy-duty vehicles. But how do we choose between the two forms? The choice between liquid and gaseous hydrogen for mobility isn't a simple one. It depends on several factors. Let's unravel this conundrum by considering a few key aspects. First, consider the vehicle type. Gaseous hydrogen, with its high pressure storage system, is commonly used in light duty fuel cell vehicles. On the other hand, for heavy duty applications such as buses and trucks, liquid hydrogen might be the go-to thanks to its higher energy density and longer range capabilities. Next, let's talk infrastructure. Gaseous hydrogen benefits from existing high pressure gas infrastructure. But for liquid hydrogen, we need to invest in specialized infrastructure for cryogenic storage and transportation, which is less common and more complex. Range and energy density are also crucial. Gaseous hydrogen, despite its lower energy density, is suitable for applications with shorter ranges. Liquid hydrogen, with its greater energy density, offers advantages for applications requiring longer distances to be covered. Finally, storage challenges cannot be ignored. With gaseous hydrogen, we grapple with issues related to storage pressure and volume. For liquid hydrogen, 
The challenges lie in maintaining cryogenic storage conditions and managing boil-off. In the end, the choice between liquid and gaseous hydrogen depends on the specific requirements of the application, infrastructure availability, and technological advancements. Both forms have their merits and ongoing research aims to address the challenges